the, the fifth and final mistake that I, I think people make in their musicals uh, is bad craft. And I can talk for, where am I at, 15 years on this subject? Um, so not long, enough. not long enough. Yeah, not long enough, or not loudly enough, or not to the right. Preaching to the choir, I should be preaching to the the neighbors next door. Um, I'm going to rattle off a couple um, uh, areas of craft, which are the the, the, the most uh, the most egregious uh, examples of bad craft. But this is not a lecture on how to fix them. It's just you know because it because it takes it takes years to study this and fix it, but um, I've got yeah, eight or so uh, areas. But, but again, the, the, the point of this is I have observed over the years that in feedback sessions, they, most of the feedback hits these areas of craft. And so if you can fix these areas of craft, that feedback will go away. If you can fix these areas of craft, that feedback will go away. Okay, not one. Uh, fix the prosody. The prosody is where the lyrics do not match the music. Right? Just bad prosody. Can't sing it. You cannot deliver the meaning of... An actor cannot get the meaning of what you're trying to say if the syllables and the music are, are in the way. That has to do with where the accents of the music um, fall have to match the accents of the lyric. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a bad line reading. Like, wait, what? I'm sorry. I understood the syllables, but I didn't understand the intent. So it's about the accents in the music. It's about elongating the wrong syllables. Right? You want to elongate the syllables that make sense. You don't want to elongate, but you don't want to elongate the syllables that don't make sense. Okay? But it's also about the shape of the melody. It's about, you know, the pitch. Even even if the rhythm is working, if you've got one note that's higher than all the rest, that's going to get emphasized. Um, if you've got one note that's higher than the rest, that's going to get emphasized. If you've got one note that's higher than the rest, if you've got one note, you see what I'm doing. But, but the opposite is true in the lower, the lower end. If you've got one note, that it's going to get emphasized. If, you, if you've got one note that's going to get emphasized, then... So watch, watch for that. So it's, it's, about, it's about accents. It's about duration. It's about pitch. And it's also about what we've deemed a linear prosody. Where, where the, the, the musical phrase is going la 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 um, but the lyrical idea is going la 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 and so the, the, what, the, what the music winds up doing is interrupting the flow of the thought. So you want the musical phrase to match the meaning of the lyric. Where, where, where you get into trouble, composers, is if you have a really great lick. ba doo doo ba doo doo ba doo doo ba doo doo And then the lyricist has to figure out those little packets of meaning that match ba doo doo ba doo doo It's really hard. Or if, you've, if the lyricist has got an idea that's a little bit more complex, and if you break up the, the, the phrase in the middle, you wind up with this lingering moment that doesn't make any sense. Even if that, that break, the break doesn't have to be six measures long or one measure, even if it's as tiny as a quarter note, sometimes even a sixteenth note will, will mess up the meaning of the phrase. Just a little tiny pause is going to, so it's not about how long the pause is, it's about the fact that there is a pause, the fact that there is a pause is useful. The fact that there is a pause, it's like why we're hanging in there, the fact that they're, like, you gotta give us more. So, um, prosody. Rhyme. <laughs> Euphony. Uh, the reason I skip over that is, um, uh, 
Pure rhyme is your friend. Pure rhyme will organize thoughts. Pure rhyme will make your jokes funnier. Pure rhyme will allow the audience to anticipate where the thought is going and then you can either um, corroborate what they were thinking or surprise them with something else. Um, it, pure rhyme also gets reinforced by a musical phrase. If, if uh, the music has its own version of rhyme. Music, right? That sort of rhymes. And you want that to match. If the music is going fun in the square, and gave me the soap, it's like, uh, uh, they're, they have to, they, you, you just feel like, oh, something went wrong there. Fun in the square, give me the soap. That idea is yours. You can have that. <laughs> soap square, the musical. <laughs> Um, whereas near rhyme and false rhyme ruins all of those that I just did. A false rhyme will, will interfere with the clarity of understanding because, because if, you're, if you're setting up the, the, the phrase to rhyme, and you get to the end of the phrase and it doesn't actually rhyme, um, the, 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 the mind is going, oh, wait, I thought I was following that thought, but it didn't quite. Near rhyme, um, in, in fact, interferes with your sense of structure. Wrap that up, wrap that up. It didn't quite wrap up. Um, near rhyme, trust me on this, is not your friend in terms of jokes. If you want it to be funny, it will be funnier if it's a pure rhyme. And uh, if you're trying for a joke in which you torture a near rhyme in order to <laughs> make it rhyme, and, and it's all in quotation marks, um, you know, Gilbert Sullivan will do that kind of thing, um, it's, it's it draws attention to the lyricist. It's, it's like, oh, aren't you clever, clever, you lyricist, you, the way you made those things not quite rhyme. You forced the character to mispronounce a word, and you got that joke. But that has very little to, I bring it back to the top, is that, is that, is that your theme? Is that your character? What does your character want? What's your theme? Is your theme, watch me make some funny jokes at the expense of pure rhyme? It's all very meta, 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 um, and um, or or try to slam in as many possible syllables as you can get before you get to the downbeat. Like, yeah, that's that's very funny to an insider crowd. It's very funny as musical theater parody, but it's not very funny. Um, one of the other uh, things I was talking about that, that near rhyme would would mess up. You've you've written them put them down. What was the third thing I said? <laughs> You said jokes. Not a friend of jokes. Not a friend of jokes. Clarity of understanding. Clarity of understanding. Sense, sense of structure, right? Yeah. Near rhyme, right? But what's the what was the last one? Full. Get, get to it. Is it euphony? Euphony. Well, euphony. I don't know. Right. I went and I jumped over to euphony. Um, anyway, I thought I'd mentioned four reasons for. Um, but anyway, near rhyme messes up the fourth reason. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, euphony, uh, uh, here's a bad mistake, moving off of rhyme and into euphony. Um, euph I spell it E-U-P-H-O-N-Y. Uh, e -E a, a thing which is euphonious is pleasant to the ear. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasant sound. Um, a, th a thing which uh, is, is not euphonious is, you know, jangly and harsh. Cacophony. Cacophony, yes, yes, it's very un-euphonious. Um, whereas, you know, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain, you know, has just a lovely you know, euphony to it. So 
I, I doubt in workshops other than this, you're going to have you know a, a, a panelist say, I did not care for this musical because it was not euphonious to my ear. But what, what they're going to say is, I, boy, those, it was hard hearing those singers, or it was an awkward lyric, or I felt the singers were really working so hard to get the words out. But it has to do with organizing the vowels and organizing the consonants, organizing assonance and alliteration um, and consonants. Um, if, if you've got you know, a, 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 a lyric which is really difficult to pronounce, um, you know, there's a conch shell on the couch, um, and you have to sing that. There's a conch shell on the couch. It's like, that is not euphonious. So, got to watch for that. Just the sound of the words. Um, uh, technically, um, you'll drive yourself crazy if you have to do this at, at, at every single line, at every single syllable. But if you do this at every single line, at every single syllable for the next year and a half of your life, you probably will have to do less and less and less, and ultimately, they're just coming out euphoniously. Or you go, hmm, let me fix that a little bit. But um, you can watch. You can improve euphony by um, looking at the, the, where the vowels are placed in the mouth, where the consonants are placed in the mouth. If you've got a lot of forward and backward and forward and backward, it's not very euphonious. If you've got a lot of ooh, do, blue kind of sounds, but they're mixed in with ooh, ee, ha, ee, ho, you, it's not as euphonious. Same with the consonants. If you're if you're going between you know gutturals and plosives, you're going between you know things like back there and puz and cuz. It's a, a mixture of all of them. Um, that's just a technical place to start. But think like a singer. If they're long sustained vowels, you want a lovelier long sustained vowel sound. You don't want that e sound, right? And that's why you're in love with me. You know, as opposed to, that's why I love you, you. Um, uh, unpolished craft, structure of the musical form, the structure of a lyric, A-A-B-A, A-B-A-B, A-B-A-C, A-A-A. There's more, but you don't need much more. Um, if your lyric is unstructured, um, you're, you're going to get feedback in, in the following areas. You'll get feedback like, yeah, I, I just couldn't track that song. I just couldn't follow it. I didn't know what she was saying. Um, structure's your friend. You, you want to figure out what you're saying in the first stanza, what you're saying in the second stanza, how you're contrasting in the B section and what you're saying in the third stanza. You want to plot that out. You want to write that down before you actually start doing the lyrics. You want to say, this is the road, this is the emotional road map. This is what I want to accomplish in the first stanza. This is what I want to accomplish in the second stanza. This is what I want to accomplish in the B section when they're going, well, maybe I've got the wrong idea. No, darn it. I've got the right idea. That's why I say final A section. Write out the blueprint. And then go back and double check, did you accomplish that blueprint? But if you have an unstructured lyric, um, you'll, 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 it's, it's not impossible to keep your audience following the train of thought. But why would you do that? Well, because it's a through song musical. Okay. So why would you do that? Because you want to? lose your audience because you don't want them to follow what your character's train of thought is. You could, you could I'm going to make up a verb, you could through sonify um, via an AABA structure, they're still singing, it's still through. Um, you know, the, 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 the fact that, yeah, but Wagner, yeah, but Strauss. Um, but they have structure too. We could talk about Wagner outside of this lecture. <laughs> okay, I'm yes. Just saying, I'm just saying, yes. Plenty of structure. Plenty, plenty of different kind of structure. They did not have um, Wagner. Did not have a lot of A A B A. 
Yeah. It did not have a lot of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, unless you call Hoya Taho a chorus. Yeah. Right. Um, look at, uh, again, I'm talking about unpolished craft. Look at a redundant book and lyrics where the lyrics just. They, they just had this scene, and now they have a lyric which covers the exact same territory that the book did. Just don't do that. Um, what that's going to involve is once you've got the book, and then you song spot, then you want to take out the stuff that the lyric has now um, kidnapped. And then the book writer has to go back in and, and figure out how to re-seam from the book into the song. They've got to be back and forth and back and forth. Um, buttons. Who knows what I mean by, who does not know what I mean by buttons? Musical buttons, right? It's okay. Yeah. Um, a, a musical button is, at the end of a song, it's the, it's the cue to applaud. It's the, you know, the difference between shave and a haircut, two bits, and shave and a haircut, two, <laughs> right? So uh, without the button, um, you kill the applause. Um, how many of you saw Bravo last night? Um, we had a discussion right before they started that the authors were concerned that they weren't going to get applause. <laughs> and I said... It has to do with your second song. If after the first song, your audience has not applauded because it's gone, dee, 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 and dialogue comes in and they miss their moment to applaud. If the second song does the exact same thing of you shaving a haircut too. So I was going to tell you, then you've told the audience, please don't applaud. We're done. Do not applaud. The third song, was, or maybe the fourth, where, where, where did um, uh, I could do anything, I could be anywhere, is that the third or fourth song? Well, that was like the eighth song, and even then it didn't have a button. Because didn't have a button? It's soloed out. Exactly, it's very, soloed out. I talked to them about that. Yep, 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 they were very aware of it. But, but I, but I. Proof that you see a whole audience not applaud your whole show. Yep. Prove your point. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Was that bad though in this situation? Here's, here's, here. If your if your goal is to have your audience not be not applaud, and there's reasons to write a musical in which you don't want your audience to applaud, no, that's not bad. Um, but but I'm saying to you that um, a lot of feedback um, comes in the in, in the form of, you know, all the songs sounded alike, or I don't know, I felt there wasn't, you know, it sort of lost its momentum. A lot of that has to do with allowing the audience to go. Okay, phew, all right, and reset button. You guys are in control of that. So um, bad buttons or lack of, a lack of buttons or soft buttons um, uh, it, it can, can really hurt your musical. Strong buttons can, can make the audience love the show, even in spite of the fact they didn't realize that they were, they, they were not having a great time. But, you know, it's like, I didn't really care for that song, but... But you know the last bar goes da 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 da, bop, and everybody goes yeah, and I love that song. It's like he tricked me, right? Um, almost done, and then I'll open for questions. Uh, unpolished craft, having having um, an uninteresting or unaccomplished accompaniment, piano vocal score that is just plain boom chuck, or is just quarter notes, or isn't. Commenting or supporting the uh, commenting on or supporting the subtext that the music is just there. Um, you you it's a musical. You want the music to be able to, to function to you know highlight. It's your it's your um, you know in, in in film has the luxury of being able to have a close up. I'm going in. I'm going look here, folks. Great. And now I'm over here on this two shot. Music can do that as well. So can direction, so can choreography. But music can say, pay attention to the, to the emotion that's happening here. If the text of the singer is la, 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 everything's fine, la, 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 everything's fine, the music can say, no, it's not. Right? Um, so a, a, 
a, a bland or unaccomplished or uninformed uh, accompaniment, or, or a score which doesn't acknowledge the, the dramatic moments. Something happens, he's reaching for the gun, he's about to pick up the gun, and the music is going to... Da, 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 da. It's like, what, what happened? Are you not seeing? Are you not seeing? You not seeing? You pick up the gun? Um, one last. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote our grandfather and mentor Lehman Engel, who who he, he talked about. Uh, you can you can put any if you if you get a, a a soprano in a glittery green dress, the audience loves your song. I'm exaggerating, um, but but he wasn't. Um, by by which means uh, you you can you can gussy up your musical. You can you, know, you can distract the audience. With, with visual pyrotechnics or casting pyrotechnics. Um, we have a lot of issues in, in this very workshop where we feel like if we bring a fantastic actor who's, you know, your, your, your song isn't really working, but an actor makes amazing choices and, you know, there's a funny character, does these, you know, these voices and, and at the end of it, the audience goes, that was wonderful, that was great, and the author goes, see, wasn't that funny? Um, whereas if we bring in an actor who just kind of sings it and doesn't gussy it up, doesn't put on the green sequin dress, and the audience just kind of sits there like, oh, does that song not work? So. Beware of the beware of the green dress. Beware of the green sequin dress. Beware of, of um, you know we'll we'll fix that with choreography, or the arrangement is gonna is gonna save the day. Um, or what, no no what you're missing is the spectacular scenery. Or I haven't quite got this character down, but let's get a great actor and we'll fix it there. Um, so. So all of these combined, um, drawing to the conclusion here, um, are make sure before you send your musical out that it's ready. Because if it's misfiring on any of these five areas, they're going to know it, they're going to peg it, they're going to smell it, and they're going to say, it's not ready for me. Um, I, you know, the craft wasn't, it just wasn't good enough. Or, the demographic was all over the place. I don't know. I don't know what the audience for this show is. Um, or yeah, I like the songs, but they, I, they, I wouldn't know how to direct them. They're not. They're not active. Um, or so. What are you trying to say with this piece? Um, that feedback will come back in the in the in the form of. So, so let me ask you a question. Why did you write this piece? What do you What are you after? It's like, ooh, that's probably about the worst thing you want to hear. Um, or uh, you'll you'll hear whose whose story is this? You know, is, is it is it the son? Is it the mother? If they're asking that kind of question, it's because your main character's motivation and need and want isn't strong enough. So, all of these areas, but more important than the rest, make sure your main character's desire and need and want is strong, and that you have you you know why you're writing the show and your thesis is strong and clear. All right. Thank you for your time, and now I'm open up for questions. Yeah. Go ahead, tap it applause. Yeah.